stoichiometry involving a polyprotic acid and a strong base is going to have the same kind of stoichiometry set up, except that there's a 2 to 1 ratio involved, right? So here's oxalic acid in your list of chemicals. Remember, it's a weak acid, so you don't break it down. There's potassium hydroxide and water. Strongest acid in the list is this weak acid, which is actually quite a strong weak acid. It's got a high Ka value. And that's oxalic acid, and the strongest base, of course, is hydroxide. But remember, if it's a titration, and you're continuously adding hydroxide, it will remove the first proton, and then remove the second proton, to be able to give you this net equation, which is in a 1 to 2 ratio of oxalic acid to hydroxide. Remember, once you get your equation, then I like to take my information and put it underneath the compound so I can figure out what I'm doing. We have 30 milliliters of the acid, and we have 20 milliliters of the base, and we have a concentration given of the base. And at the point where the moles are equivalent and they've reacted in the proper 2 to 1 ratio, what is the concentration that can be determined of that original oxalic acid? That's the question. So how do you do that? Okay, well if you can find the moles here, then react half the moles of this to this in a 2 to 1 ratio. When you've got the moles here and the liters here, you can find concentration. That's all done in this line right here. So again, how does that look? I'm kind of giving you different looks sometimes. Moles per liter can be written as moles per liter instead of big M, right? Sure. And then I can start off the equation by taking the liters here and multiplying it by the 0.35 moles per liter. That cancels out my liters, and I've got moles of KOH. Now, what's the ratio of KOH to oxalic acid? It's two KOHs for every one oxalic acid. So I can remove now the moles of KOH, and I've got moles of oxalic acid now up to this point in my calculation. But if I want to find the concentration, that's moles per liter. Well, if they've got moles on top, put liters on the bottom. And there's your concentration, 0 decimal, 1, 2. I know, I know. It's, chem guy, you make it look so easy, but when I do it, it's kind of hard. Yeah, well, that's the way it always is. It's practice, practice, practice. Watch this, you do your own, and you get really, really good at it. Because I couldn't do this very well a long time ago. Now, listen. If you were asked, okay, what's the pH of that original sodium, uh, potassium hydroxide solution? Well, that's not too hard. Because if the concentration is 0.35 moles per liter, you can just go, the pH equals 14 minus the negative log of 0.35. Did you stay with me there? You know what I'm doing? To calculate the pH of that. So you can easily do it. Now, a little bit harder. Somebody says, oh yeah, well what was the concentration originally of this chemical right here? that was used in the reaction, the oxalic acid. Well, if you know its concentration, that it, and it's a weak acid, you have to go through the weak acid series of steps in order to determine, that's mean, that means set up an, an expression, and then plug in a Ka value for the oxalic acid, and you can find the pH of that oxalic acid. Now, here's a real great question. When these two chemicals have reacted in solution, What's the pH of this reaction at the point of equivalence? Now, you know, the last reaction we just did, hydronium plus hydroxide makes 2H2O. Oh, you know, the pH of that solution at the equivalence point was 7, because the only product that formed in the reaction was water. Water has a pH of 7. So that was easy to be able to do. You didn't have to calculate. You just go 7. Wow. In this case, this oxalic acid produces a base in solution. So we don't just have water formed. This complete, this neutralization reaction actually hasn't led to the solution being neutral in pH at all. So what is the pH of the solution at the point of equivalence or neutralization? Well, at the equivalence point, we don't have any more of this and don't have any more of this. They've totally reacted in their multiple -mole ratios to cancel out. They're gone. The only thing that's left is this. If we know the concentration of this ion, which is actually a weak base, we can go through that series of weak base steps with the Kb and the equilibrium expression to calculate the pH of that weak base. This is so important! Whatever the moles are here at the equivalence point, we have the same number of moles here because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. How do you get the moles? Concentration of that chemical here 
which we now know is 0.12 moles per liter, concentration times volume will get you moles. So concentration and volume here, uh, concentration and volume multiplied together gives you the moles here, which actually when you multiply these two together, you get 0.0036 moles. That's how many moles you've made here. This totally reacts with this to make this many moles here, one to one ratio. But that's moles, not concentration. What's the volume of this solution now? So is it 30 mils? No. Is it 20 mils? No. It's 50 mils. The new volume of the solution then gets divided into this, which is 0 decimal 050 liters. And when you do that math there, you get 0 decimal 072 moles per liter. Hey, listen, what is that? That's the concentration of a weak base. And you now go through all of those steps again to find the pH, which better not be greater than 7. You know why, don't you? It's a base.